All right, everybody, I am Ann of Ann's Pups, and I'm here to give you an instructional video on how to set your home up when you bring home your puppy. I just recently, my family and I, you know, we've been breeding 22 years at this point, and I don't even think twice about what a puppy needs. And you guys are always asking me how to set things up when we bring when you bring your puppy home. And my family just recently, we got a little Bengal kitty, Zara, and I got home and I realized, oh my goodness, I know nothing about what a kitten needs or the setup that she should have. And I thought, this is how my puppy buyers feel. So I'm trying to make this video to walk you through um, a potential setup that you can have for your puppy. There's all obviously lots of different ways you can do things and everybody does stuff a little differently. Um, but this is what I would recommend and it's worked well for me in the past and uh, is well suited to our puppies. So um, this is like anything else, you know, there's people that like to have every single puppy product on the planet and there's people that like the bare essentials. So um, I feel like this is a great um, setup for your puppy and it's a great one to follow. Um, so, all right, we'll start off here. You definitely need your puppy crate. Um, this is essential to crate training. Um, your puppy, this is one of the crates we have an Amazon shopping list with all the products you see are listed on that shopping list. Uh, so that'll be linked in the comments. So this crate is on there. Um, you want to have a crate that is properly sized for your puppy. That's essential to crate training working. The theory behind crate training um, is that a puppy and a dog really doesn't want to go to the bathroom in a place they eat or sleep. Um, but if it's too big, then they turn a corner of it into their bathroom. So uh, this crate has a door on the side. It has a door on the front. It has some gliders on the bottom, which are nice. It doesn't scratch up your floor. Um, and then as you can see, all right inside this front door here, there is a divider. So that's what's essential to making this work for your puppy. Your puppy is going to grow constantly, especially our Airedale puppies. They grow insanely quick because they're a large breed dog and you're going to be moving those dividers constantly. So this crate is well suited for um, a Lakeland or a Welsh, this specific size right here. And I have the sizing listed on our shopping list as well. Um, in your crate setup, Everyone was always concerned about bedding for their puppy. You really don't need bedding to start. Um, it actually can cause problems just because they're in there alone and they can eat it and get stuffing out or they can go pee and then it smells like a bathroom and that's confusing to them. So you really don't need bedding in there. Down the road, you can um, get a little puppy pad. When they're all house trained and they're out of the chewing stage, you can get a little puppy pad or a puppy bed that fits your crate. Um, but at this point, I would just leave it empty. We do send every puppy home with a little puppy blanket. We have rubbed that on mom and siblings and it comes home smelling like, like us and what your puppy's used to. Um, this is a snuggle puppy and people really have talked very highly of these and our puppies. It's very comforting to them. Um, there's a little heart that actually puts off like a little heartbeat and there's a heating pad um, that is warm and so we would recommend uh, that you wrap your puppy blanket from us around this and then you mix the scent from home with the heartbeats that they're used to hearing from their siblings and the warmth and it's very comforting. Um, the crate is a big deal for a little puppy. They're coming home from being with a whole litter and they're in a crate all by themselves and it's really hard for puppy parents to let their puppy whine and cry. And I just encourage you to stand strong if you want to crate train. Because if you come every time they cry, these are terriers and they are smart. And they will very quickly figure out, oh, if I just cry long enough, they'll come. And you really want to be able to have a dog that can self-soothe and learn to love their crate. So there's lots of things you can do to help your puppy love their crate. Um... One of the things is actually feeding your puppy in the crate, giving them treats, playing in the crate, just trying to make it a fun place so that you're, they're not just dreading being locked in there. Um, locking them in and then waiting a minute and then letting them out and giving them a treat, you know, just enforcing that 
being put in here doesn't always mean you're gonna be in here all night. So don't let the only time you ever lock them in there be all night. Um, the other thing for this puppy set up here, I would highly recommend, and I have it listed on our Amazon shopping cart, I would highly recommend getting a protective surface to put under your fence. Um, two reasons, one being puppies will just be scratching and destroying your floors and boy that this phase will end and you don't want to have remnants left over from your puppy the second reason being a big part of house training um, for puppies is related to smell and they really do smell where they go to the bathroom um, so it's really important to have a surface that that won't absorb and that you can totally get wiped clean so i have a, a big plastic sheet um, kind of like what you would roll a an office chair on that has worked really well for us in the past that's on our Amazon shopping cart list. So in this little pen here, um, you can close the gate. This is my brother Steve who's helping me. You cannot always be with your puppy and honestly you shouldn't be. It's not good for them to constantly be surrounded by people because someday you're gonna have to leave them alone. And so it's just good practice um, to have a place a safe place that's not necessarily always the crate sometimes it might be where you can just put your puppy and go cook supper and not have to worry about them going to the bathroom or chewing something so in your little puppy setup should be the crate where they can go in there and sleep if they would like there should be some safe toys so like plastic toys um, here's a couple that we have on our shopping list and we we do have a whole video on puppy toys um, so that's not the brunt of this video, but see, these are some of the things we like to have in our puppy playpen. During the day, you can have food and water in here. I guess food you typically feed on a schedule, um, so you wouldn't leave food in here all the time, but it's fine to feed your puppy in this playpen, and then they can play. They don't feel like they're being locked in the crate. You're not making the crate the terrible place they always have to go when you're busy. Um, and we really like this fence. Um, this one's been around for a while. We use it both outside when the puppies want to have a little play day outside um, or for pens like this. Um, but I like this one because it's a very sturdy crate. Some of or a fence, some of these fences I've, I've purchased at different places are really flimsy. Um, and this one is really nice. And they, they do have the option, which I think I linked to have a little gate on the front of it too. So this is kind of the puppy setup. Oh, I do have here... You want to make sure you have a no spill bowl if you have a just plain old bowl uh, just sitting on the ground the puppies are going to immediately spill it um, the, both of these bowls are really hard to spill um, the one is a little elevated and the other one is just harder to flip over so i would recommend those so this is kind of what your your puppy pen should look like in your home getting started um, Again, I want to emphasize that you want to make that crate a happy place. Um, you don't want to reinforce bad behavior if they're being bad in there and you're always coming running. Um, and yeah, so the next phase, and this ties into this, just like I said you, about having a playpen in your house, it's kind of like having a newborn baby at home and they warn you, you know, if you get really frustrated, go put them in their safe place in their crib and shut the door and calm down. You know what? Sometimes it's the same way with our puppies. And so having a playpen is so helpful for that. And it's also incredibly helpful. Puppies love being outside. So it's super helpful to be able to take them outside. Um, if you have a fenced in yard, that's ideal. A yard that's safe for them. You can put them out there, give them plenty of time to go to the bathroom. Um, get their energy out, get your frustration out, leave you alone for a little while. Um, if you don't have a fenced in yard though, a great option is uh, one of these tie out stakes. And again, I have this um, listed on the Amazon shopping cart. And this is the getting started with your puppy shopping list on our Amazon shopping thing. Um, but this is a stake, it's a very sturdy stake. And this is um, the tie out cable for a, a pretty heavy dog. So like for an Airedale. Some people are really opposed to tying their dogs up and I am by no means suggesting that you leave your dog tied all the time. That is not what I'm saying here, but these are great. If you put them away from trees and stuff, they can't get tangled. 
They can run pretty far on them. They can have plenty of time to go to the bathroom. Sometimes if you're just standing there with a leash, they're just wanting to chew on your feet and play with you. And you're like, come on, go to the bathroom. Sometimes you just need to step away and let them work on it. And they maybe need a long time. And so this is a great option if you don't have um, a fenced in yard. So you're probably wondering about this huge bag of pine shavings here. Um, we do work on litter training with our puppies while they're with us. Um, we do not sell our puppies as house trained. Puppies don't even get full bowel and bladder control till they're about four months old. Um, but we really try to set them up with proper training that's enforcing. There is a specific place to go to the bathroom. Um, and so we use pine shavings with a whole litter of puppies. They work really well because it clumps to the poop right away. It absorbs urine. Um, it keeps them pretty clean. Um, we're not necessarily recommending you go home and use pine shavings, but it's something a lot of people want to do exactly what we're doing. So we want to inform you what we do, and then you can make that informed decision. But if you're wanting to kind of copycat what we have, when we're training a puppy, the whole theory, and I mentioned this earlier, is that they smell where they're supposed to go to the bathroom. So if they go to the bathroom, you should pick it up and put it on the wood shavings and then um, really clean the area if you can. If you're outside, you can't always do that. Um, where they went to the bathroom. And this is the same concept with pee pads. Um, if some people like that live in big cities are planning to use puppy pads to train, and I always tell people if that's your goal, I would get a little bit of these wood shavings just to start and sprinkle it on your pee pads um, just to reinforce, okay, we're switching from wood shavings to a pee pad. Now, really quickly, I wanna mention, pee pads have um, a smell in them that kind of reminds the puppies this is a bathroom, just like what I'm saying about smell being tied to house training. So you don't necessarily want to put them in your puppy area unless you are trying to um, litter train your puppies because it can it can then be confusing down the road so just a side note but so this bag here i mean you can get a huge bag like this at tsc for i think six bucks um this is a lot of sawdust or wood shavings so you really if you're going to try to go down this route um you wouldn't have to get one this big so i did find some pine wood shavings a little bag and i put those on our amazon shopping list as well so that kind of covers that. These are great. And I did talk about this in our um, puppy toy video, so I won't go into this too much. But since this is kind of a puppy video, these are so nice for doing exactly what Steve's doing, sitting on a chair and, letting, and playing with your puppy, um, but not really having to move too terrible much. And also keeping the biting off your hands you know maybe your kids want to be playing with the puppies but they're too nippy you know this is a great tool for that so um, we highly recommend these we really like them i think they should make them for children um, this is a book we really recommend for all three breeds of our terriers i know it's for airedales um, but they really have good terrier information in here that i have found applies to all three of our breeds um, and we really like this book, and I'm not going to lie, we're a little partial because we've been quoted in it quite a few times. So check that out. And honestly, I really find it to be interesting um, and helpful for training and just understanding puppies. Um, and speaking of that, using that toy to prevent biting, um, a lot of people, and I have videos specific to this as well, a lot of people struggle with the biting, puppy biting. They love to chew their teeth. It feels good to bite into something. Um, so having great puppy toys is a huge part of preventing this. So check out our puppy toy video. But these bitter um, apple sprays, there's a lot of different kinds of them. These are great because you can spray them on things that you don't want them to chew because they don't like the smell or the taste. Um, or you can spray, spray them like right in the puppy's mouth. You want to be careful you don't spray it in their eyes. So, you know, if you're giving them to your children, which it is very helpful to, it's a helpful tool for kids um, to kind of teach puppies. Just make sure your kids are educated um, and that they're old enough to handle that responsibility. But these are really great because 
They really don't like the smell or the taste. Um, so there's, that's the apple spray, bitter apple spray. And sadly, you're going to need a lot of um, cleaning materials. You're gonna want a carpet cleaner, um, some disinfecting wipes, and something that is going to remove the smell of urine and stool in your house. That's both for your sake, but also, like I said, house training is very closely tied for a puppy to smell. And if they smell, hey, this is where I always pee, then they might make that their bathroom. So having a biodeodorizer that specifically is for cutting um, the smell of urine and stool is really important. We really love all of our Life's Abundance products. There's other videos about that. Um, so this one is specific to Life's Abundance, but we have some other ones on our um, Amazon shopping list if you'd like different ones. Um, and then obviously you need a leash and collar. This is going to change as your puppy changes. Obviously size changes. Um, I have listed on here, th these come in a set together, which is great because let's be honest, puppies are messy and they, <laughs> they get dirty very quickly. So this size collar is perfect for a Welsh or a Lakeland Terrier um, and will last them for a little while, like a couple weeks to a couple months. For an Airedale, this, this size, they're gonna be out of it within probably two weeks of you picking up, assuming you're picking up at eight weeks old. So some people like to start with that to make sure they have a nice, tight, firm collar for the way home that they're not gonna slip out of. Um, so these are a good recommendation for that. But um, there's also this one listed on here. Uh, it's very similar. I think it gets a hair bigger than those other two, but same thing, good for Welsh and Lakeland. It comes in a lot more fun patterns and that's listed, this is a straw battery one. That's listed on our Amazon shopping cart too. And again, the Airedales will grow out of that one fairly quick. So this one um, is one that'll last the Airedales a little bit longer, the Airedale puppies. It's a little bit bigger and it would be the next step up for the Welsh and Lakeland puppies. It's got a nice leash that's adjustable. You can make it longer or shorter. It's got some reflective stuff on it. So that's always nice. And, and then I always recommend um, a harness. They work really nicely, especially because your puppy has to learn to walk on a leash. They've never really done that too much. Um, and it feels weird to be pulled from the neck. And honestly, I, I hate to see people yanking puppies by their neck. So harnesses, A, they give you full body control. Um, this one is a step in one that I really like. There are harnesses out there that are very confusing to put on. So just be aware of that. This is the right size for um, all of our puppies getting started. This is the extra small. Um, and again, I just, it gives you that full body control and they're, you're not pulling on their neck and it just teaches them how to walk on a leash. Um, along with your collars and leashes, you're also going to want to invest in some sort of ID tag. Um, I have a couple that I like listed on our Amazon shopping cart. Um, and they are micro trips. So obviously that's the tag they can never lose but I do like to have a physical tag. If they just run two houses down to your neighbor, that saves you a whole lot of time than them thinking they're lost, taking them to a shelter, scanning the microchip. So um, be sure you think about that and get some sort of ID. And that's really fun to get. When you have a new puppy, it's fun to pick out your leash and your collar and your ID tags. Um, so the next thing here, we have these um, Corunda beds. That they're off the floor, they're elevated. Um, we have one on our Amazon shopping cart. These, your puppy, our puppies do use these, so they're used to these now. Um, and it's, it'd be one of those things that's up to you whether you get that now or you get it down the road. Um, they're great for setting in the corner of your living room. And it's kind of like a little hammock for the dogs, so they really like those. Um, I do have in our puppy toy shopping cart, there's that little basket too. And you, it's so fun to go buy toys and you are going to want to have somewhere to put them all. Um, and then I think last is to bell train your puppies. So I've done this with a couple of my dogs. I haven't done it with all of them. Um, this one's great because it hangs on the doorknob and you don't have to think about it. If you take them out this door and you open the door, they're gonna hear that bell every time they go out. So the dogs that I have um, bell trained, I literally hung it on my back door 
Every time we went outside, that I just opened that door, it rung on its own. I didn't have to make any special effort to ring it. And then someday they're gonna come over and they're gonna nudge that bell. And the second they do, you jump up and you take them out. Um, and then, you know, this is puppy behavior. They're gonna go through a spurt where they're like, oh, this is how I get outside. And they're gonna do it a whole bunch. And then you're gonna take them out a whole bunch. Um, obviously at some point that has to end. Once you know they understand the concept, um, then you're golden. But it really, I love having a bell. Um, sometimes you just get into the groove, especially if you're like working from home and your dog wants to tell you they wanna go outside. So these are kind of the basics. Sorry, this was a long video, but um, hopefully it's helpful to you. Please feel free to reach out if you have questions. Um, we have a couple different uh, categories on our Amazon shopping list. And this one was the um, getting started with your puppy category. So you can check out the other ones and we have a playlist on our YouTube channel that's called instructional and I'm trying to make more and more videos for all of you. So hopefully that helps and good luck.